You ever have problems with your air conditioner where you ride down the road, it's nice and cool, but then you get to a stoplight, sit there for a while, and it doesn't work good? Maybe your car has the same problem as this truck. Let's check it out. So what we have is a 2003 Dodge Ram 3500 with a 5.7 liter Hemi engine. The problem is, going down the road, he has air conditioning just fine, but when you stop, especially when it idles for a while, the air conditioning does not cool as good and actually blows out hot air. Let me show you what we did to troubleshoot it. All right, so we're coming at this halfway through the repair. We already know what's wrong with it. A lot of stuff missing right here. What you wanna do, you wanna crank the car, turn on the AC, see if it's working. It's Compressor worked just fine, it was kicking in, but then once it got up to pressure, it was kicking on and off really fast, back and forth. So I looked over here, this is his air conditioning condenser. The fan mounts right behind it, which is on the ground right there, because we put a new motor on it. The motor was not turning on. What it is, the motor sucks air through the condenser, cools it down, and allows your air conditioner to work properly. When the fan's not working, when you get to a stop, there's no air coming through this, it gets too hot. The high pressure switch turns on, which turns the compressor back off, and then it blows hot air inside the cab. Another thing you wanna check is your relays. All the Dodges are different according to what type of truck it is, trim levels, but just look it up. Have your fuse cover. Right on the inside the fuse cover, it tells you what every fuse and relay is, which is this one. Same exact relay, for the parking lights, so we turned those parking lights on, realized they worked, took those two relays, swapped them, put them in place, started the truck back up, fan did not operate. So we knew it must the relay was good, wiring, we gotta check it. Unplug the fan, put a voltmeter onto the wires, coming out from the, the fuse box and the relay box, started up again, had voltage just like it's supposed to. So then we realized, yeah, it's gotta be the fan gotta be the motor we'll then check it out again we took two wires jumped it straight off the battery to the motor motor still did not turn so we thought it was the motor and it is so one thing I recommend is go ahead and take everything apart if you can do that if you got another ride to go to the store with take this motor off take it to the auto parts store to make sure you get the right part thank God we did because the part that came back for a 2003 Dodge Ram was different than the one that was on it so we think maybe it was changed before and it had a 2004 motor, which is different than the 2003. So the lady took it back to the back, came back out with a 2004 and it fits. So what you're gonna have to do is take the shroud off from the back of the condenser, take the fan off, you have that nut right there. It'll reveal three bolts that hold the motor in. Take it out, put your new one in, make sure the wiring harness and everything fits good to go so now we'll put it all back together all right so we have everything out of the way your relay box you're going to want to move it out of the way disconnect battery cable it leaves this whole open area to be able to get the new one back in so what we did we took the condenser and the fan shroud out as an assembly you have enough flex in your AC lines where you don't have to disconnect it so you don't lose your charge. One on top up here, one down there on the bottom. But you see there's a gap right here. You're gonna have to cut that out because the original shroud assembly has a piece of plastic over that. So you just cut that however you wanna cut it off. Cut the plastic off and it'll give you clearance to be able to move that shroud around the AC line. So now we got it ready to go. We're gonna put bolts back in. One bolt hole location over this area, two more on the other side. All right, so we have the shroud mated back to the condenser. Got a bolt here and a bolt down there. Not, not too bad, but not the easiest thing in the world. Show you one on the other side. We think this job has been done previously. It only has one bolt on this side, but it worked all these years. So maybe it'll keep working years more. Now we gotta try to slide the whole condenser, fan assembly all back into the spot. All 
I was like, today, I mean, every day I'm getting better, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that long, a little bit. Once you get the fan put together and the shroud together, then you got these mount bolts go into the frame, one there, on the other side, got another one. It actually has a hole down in the bottom of the frame. A rubber connector fits down in that hole, supports it from the bottom, those two bolts at the top. All right, now you wanna connect the fan wire and harness, fan connector. All right, so now the moment of truth, we're gonna crank it up, see if this fan turns, and see if it cools down as AC. So another problem it was having was because the condenser wasn't able to cool down because of the fan, the pressure was going up too high and the compressor was kicking off and on fast over and over again. It even made it feel like his engine wasn't running right. So it would kick on, kick off, kick on, kick off. But as you can see, it's sitting at idle. The cab is cooling off. Everything's running like it should. You don't have to mess with the Freon at all. All right, so what we have now is another happy customer doing things the Stanley way. Now just remember, if you have the same AC problems, you get on the road, your air conditioner seems to work okay, uh, but then you get to a stoplight or somewhere where you're idling for a long time, just remember that you may not be pulling enough air through your condenser to cool the Freon down so that the air conditioning can work properly. What that's gonna do is gonna raise pressure, it's gonna cause your compressor to turn off because it can hit the high pressure switch, and it can cycle back and forth, back and forth, on and off too many times. So now normally if you take it to a shop, what they're gonna do is they're gonna wanna take uh, all the Freon out of the system, they're gonna charge you for that, they're gonna evacuate it, they're gonna disconnect lines, you're gonna pull everything off, put a new fan on, and then put everything back together, then charge you to service the system back up. Whereas you can see with a little bit of thinking out of the box, that's not necessarily what you have to do. Just kind of think. If you think you need to take air conditioning lines loose just to get a shroud off, Think about just cutting the shroud. Just think about what you could do to pull a shroud off without getting into your AC system. Cause you gotta have a license for all that, it costs a lot of money. So total repair cost, uh, he got the part at O'Reilly, 28 bucks, and that's all it costs. So if you're doing this yourself, and anybody can do this with a few simple tools, take a few bolts off, pull the shroud out, do not disconnect the air conditioning lines. For 28 bucks, you can fix this problem yourself. So with another repair done the Stanley way, keep your money in your pocket by doing it yourself. Have a great day.